Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Holmes, if, if I could, you know, I, uh, for over 20 years, I practiced as an orthopedic surgeon in Wyoming, a state where we are always trying to recruit and return and retain physicians in rural areas, sometimes pretty remote, to just get the health care that we need. Uh, I think we're running more and more into the fact of recruitment being a challenge, especially since so many residency programs for training are done in the big cities. And you know the correlation of where people more likely to then set up a household where they decide to live and practice based on where they trained or within a, a radius of 50 miles uh, from there. So it, I see that as a disadvantage to rural communities because the training is from a distance. So Senator Tester and I have a bipartisan bill called the Rural Physician Workforce Production Act of 2023. Uh, it addresses the current Medicare-funded residency program problem for entire states. And uh, the, the bill would solve some problems by lifting resident caps and removing Medicare limits on rural resident training growth, uh, providing equal funding to rural hospitals for residency training because so much of that funding is disproportionate, uh, increasing Medicare reimbursements for urban hospitals that send residents to rural health care facilities, uh, and creating an elective per resident payment initiative to ensure rural hospitals have the resources to bring on additional Residents. So the approach to solving workforce shortages empower rural health care providers. I think it's something we should try to implement. So can you explain how legislation geared toward rural physician workforce development could impact health outcomes and access in rural America? Great. Thank you for the question. I'm glad you, br you brought this up. Um, as you mentioned, we know that two of the strongest predictors for um, uh, rural practice are being from a rural area and being trained in a rural area. And so addressing the paucity of you know, physician training, but also more generally workforce training in rural areas is critical. Uh, rural areas have shortages and so um, of just about every workforce. And so a initiative to boost training in rural areas has a um, twofold uh, effect. The first is in the short run, you have uh, trainees out there providing uh, better, you know, more care, but also in the long run, you're going to generate a, a workforce that is more um, rural aware um, and likely to pra continue to practice. Okay. And then doc Dr. Herman, in terms of the local community hospitals, nursing homes, in a place like Wyoming, you know, if there's a loss of one facility, uh, the impact on the entire community can be devastating. Uh, not only do closures impact the services and the care provided, it imposes additional challenges in terms of attracting teachers to the community, attracting small businesses to the community, all of those sorts of things. Recently, our, the Wyoming Hospital Association conducted a statewide study to determine the economic impacts uh, of hospitals and nursing homes. And so, you know, it's, just, it's very significant, the number of jobs that are supported. So what do you see federal policies that you think are most needed to protect against closures of these critical facilities in rural areas? Because I think over the last 15 years, whether it's a Republican administration, a Democrat administration, the, the great number of, of hospital facilities that closed are rural. That's right. And I think you said it's on one facility. It can be one person that causes one facility to close. So I think Dr. Holmes addressed a lot of that. One thing that we found successful in recruiting providers to rural communities and retaining them, that it's not the health system that recruits and retains the providers. It's the community that recruits and re retains the providers. So we get our communities very involved in the recruitment, the retention. When you're part of a community and you recognize that you are a very critical part of the community, I think it's very gratifying as a provider. I think you're much more likely to come and you're much more likely to stay. Yeah. So uh, Ms. Honey, following that, so we had a community in Wyoming a number of years ago when I first started to practice where we had a physician and a physician assistant. At the time they were tied together where the physician had to observe and be in the same facility. So the physician was tragically killed in, Iraq, in an accident. He was the only physician in a community. And at that point, there was no way for the physician assistant. They couldn't, the, the community tried to recruit a physician to then supervise the physician assistant. So they were going to lose everything. But we actually were able to change the law in Wyoming to then have the physician assistant report and work under a physician at a remote location in a local hospital, in an emergency room 100 miles down the road. Not as ideal. But, but it, so it reflect, reflected a need that was going to be met and legislatively we stepped in. Have you seen similar things to that where legislation has to be done at a local level or statewide to try to help put health care in communities? Um, I don't have anything to um, answer towards that. Um, we do have um, PAs and 
nurse practitioners in our um, facility, which is great, but I don't have anything yeah. that's legislative. Because I don't know, Dr. Herman or Dr. Holmes, you've seen a change in how physician and physician assistants, nurse practitioners, uh, additional care providers has evolved since kind of our days in medical school, if you will. We have uh, advanced providers that actually staff some of the emergency rooms in our smaller hospitals, supported by the physicians in our level one trauma center, and also transportation uh, from the people there. So I think it's a, a very good model that can be done. I think it does have some limitations. You're probably not gonna get a emergency trained physician in every small community, but we have a lot of resources that sometimes regulations get in the way. Uh, what we can certainly do is get back to you on that because we can look at the regulations and say where the barriers are. Yeah, because what we're seeing, some, yeah, Dr. Holmes. Just, it recognizes team-based healthcare, which I think is where we need to be headed. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.